In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father, who raised Jesus from the dead, be with all of you. Good evening, everyone. It is with a sincere heart that I welcome all of you here this evening. It's a sincere heart because all of us have journeyed through this year together, knowing the pain and suffering of loss, but also knowing the companionship of family and friends, hopefully our parish community. We have walked together, and tonight we come to walk as people who have experienced the same loss. But we gather aware of God's presence, aware of his love and of his healing strength. And in a very special way, we pray that where our loved ones have gone, we hope to follow. We celebrate them tonight, but we celebrate the common bond that all of us share and praying to our loved ones, praying for them, but more importantly, that they watch over us and protect us always. Let us pray. We are who we are today, and we are where we are today because of those whose lives have touched our lives and who have let our lives touch theirs. God, in his infinite wisdom, does not intend us to be without hope when we experience the loss of a loved one. So our grief has to be tinged with gratitude for lives which have shaped us, for hands that have helped us, for voices that have inspired us, for eyes which have beheld us, for ears that have listened to us. Believing that those who have died in Christ will rise with Christ, we trust that we will meet again where there will be no farewells. So let us reverence those who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith.
A reading from the book of Revelation. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. The one who sat in the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Then he said, Write these words down, for they are trustworthy and true. He said to me, They are accomplished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give a gift from the spring of life-giving water. The victor will inherit these gifts, and I shall be his God, and he will be my son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. No one can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can you, any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to the span of your life? And wh why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not wor worry saying, what will I eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear? For it, is, for it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's troubles is enough for today. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I often say to people, I love where we live, that we have the changing of times and seasons. And I think these days especially give us pause to reflect on the beauty of autumn. You know, one day, and there was much said this year about maybe the trees won't change the same way. But all that put aside, not that it's not important or those theories are not important, all that aside, we still have the beauty of autumn. And you know, you can pass a tree one day and try and go back again and the next day, and so quickly the beauty of those leaves are gone, those changed leaves. And I always find myself thinking that the beauty, the beauty of this time of the year in, in colors that we could never duplicate, they say, is about death. Those trees are dying. In just a couple more weeks, we will see empty trees. We'll enter into the winter, and we'll have to go through the winter with nothing. But all of us know that in the spring, even this time of year, I'm, I'm giving off like I really know what I'm talking about. I know you plant things this time of the year so that in the spring they come up and look beautiful. I've seen it happen. I haven't done it myself, but I've seen it happen. But we know that when the spring comes, their beauty comes forth from the ground, and it begins again. The life is there. It's not gone. That just as we experience the autumn change into the cold of winter, we can live through the winter. We might have to escape every once in a while to warmth, but we can live through the winter knowing that spring is here. Spring will come. And with spring, there's new life. And a tree that is one year beautiful, the next spring it becomes more beautiful and grows more abundantly. Flowers return, and there's color that's re represented all over again. That we don't live in that moment forever. We don't live in the winter forever. And tonight we must remember that we do not live in our loved one's death forever. We reflected on the day of their funeral that life for them has not ended. It's changed. And that change brings about for them the long and eternal spring where beauty is theirs forever. Where seeing God face to face is theirs not just for a time, but for all eternity. Theirs is that beautiful vision forever. Spring. Spring gives them the new life that baptism promises. That's where they are. And yes, 
painfully and, and dare I even say selfishly, we want them here. But where they have gone, we hope to follow. And one day we will all be together. The sting is here. The pain is there. It's real. We're never going to take that away. But what is also real is that they live forever, watching over us, interceding for us, at times giving us little signs, times giving us encouragement, times just reflecting. You know, as I stand in the midst of these pictures, these have come from your homes. These have come from a place close where you pass it day in and day out, and you feel a warmth just in a picture. Their picture is in your hearts. It's in your minds. It's in your memories. And nothing, nothing can take that away from you or me. The truth is that they live, and they live on in Christ. Today we gather as a family of faith, celebrating All Souls Day. And it's a day, yes, for us to remember. It's a day for us to pray for our loved ones. But it's also a day for us to remember to pray to them. Just yesterday, the church celebrated All Saints Day. I'm always mindful, reminding people and mindful myself, yes, there are saints in the windows, there are saints in the statues, there are saints with prayer cards, but on All Saints Day, we celebrate the people that we call mom or dad, grandmom or granddad, brother or sister, son or daughter, any loved one that's gone before us, we celebrate them on All Saints Day. Because our faith tells us that anyone who's gone to heaven is a saint. And our certain faith tells us that our loved ones do go to heaven. They're not gone. They're not passed away. They're not dead. They live forever. And they live in heaven. So we pray to them. Have you found yourself doing that? Have you found yourself asking for them to help you? to protect you, to watch over you, to give you the courage to get another day of life under control. We Celebrate them tonight. Yes, we miss them. There's no way to take that away. But the best thing to do with our grief is to be thankful that they were in our lives, that they touched our hearts, that they made our lives different. Every single one of them. Today, we hear their voices in our own memories. We hear their voices when we look at the pictures. We hear their voices in stories. I, I often say at a funeral that never get tired of the stories. Even if the young people, the grandchildren say, I've heard that story before, tell it again. Never get tired of the stories because the stories are from our hearts. And if they are with the Lord, and the Lord is in our hearts, they'll never be far from us. Tonight's a night to feel a closeness to them. And as I said at the beginning of our celebration, we share a common theme together here tonight. All of us have lost a loved one. All of us have bid farewell to someone we miss. But we're together. And we're together in this communion of faith that reminds us that life is everlasting. And for them, they have received, as hard as it is to say, they have received that reward that is theirs for all eternity. To see God face to face. For them to be reunited with loved ones. For them to share in the great communion of heaven. And you know, each time we come to the celebration of the Eucharist, each time we gather at this altar that their pictures adorn tonight, we're close to them. The closest we can be in this life to them because we share this heavenly meal. What we do with this Eucharist, each time we come to celebrate the Eucharist, we touch heaven and heaven touches us. And if they are in heaven, that's the closest we can be to them. And that's why we gather at this altar. That's why we gather each Sunday that's why we gather when we celebrate a person's death. We gather at the altar because it's there that we're closest to them. Yes, these pictures speak a thousand words. 
But the words are far more meaningful that come from the pictures in our hearts and in our minds and in our memories. And not death, not anything, not even time or the changing of seasons can take away those memories. Yes, we are all experiencing the winter, the cold winter. But for them and for us, spring is just around the corner. Spring will come. And for them, spring has come for all eternity. And they enjoy that beauty that we long to have. I think at the heart of what we do tonight is our prayer that where they have gone, we one day hope to be. So we live in hope that we will see them face to face in the glory of heaven. But until then, we come close to them at this altar. We meet them in the Eucharist. We meet them in our memories. And we meet them in the depth of our hearts where all love comes from. They are not far from you or from me.
God of all creation, on the first day of life, we set our feet on a journey toward you. <clears throat> Each day brings us closer to you and to eternal life. Father of mercies and God of all consolation, hear us as we pray with compassion for each other and as we seek your assistance. our families and friends, for all those who grieve, that they may be comforted. Pray to the Lord. In loving memory of all those who have left us for a time, that they may know the joy of your presence, we pray to the Lord. For ourselves, that faith may sustain us, the memory of our loved one be dear to us, and the hope of resurrection be strong in us. We pray to the Lord. For those suffering at this hour, and for those who minister to them, and for the dying, that they may be at peace. We pray to the Lord. Let our arise arise like rise. Father, who made us to your mercy, which is beyond all telling, and to your love, which is everlasting, we commend those who have left us for a time, but not forever. In particular, we now remember. Carl A. Abenizio. Helen Blinker Amadio. Todd S. Boswick. Joan Bradley Thompson. Rosemary Brennicky. Molly Joan Connor Brewster. Joan Burrister, James Burns, third, Daniel J. Callahan. Anthony J. Capelli, Victor Sirio, John Cipollone, Frank J. Colucci, Jr., Susan F. Connor, Antoinette Connor. Marilyn 
Alan Conwell. Margaret Mary Corcoran. Anthony C. Costa. Patricia Cunningham. Charles C. Curie. Rudy Dalton. Bill Davidson. Edgar Deal. John D. Camillus. Mary G. Del Archipredi. Luca, Joan M. Denon, Raymond C. Denon Sr., Juanita de Scholtos, Bernard Devlin. Carmela DeFabio, Anna F. DeFabio, Anthony D. Giovanni, Mary DeSancto, Anne M. DeTrolio, Mary Donnelly, John F. Doherty, Teresa E. Edwards, Matthew G. Fabian, Colin Farrell, Dolores Farina, Katie Jean Fox, William Finsterbush, David Fittipaldi, Sr. Anita Louise Fitzgerald, Josephine Fletcher, Jean Franchi, Walter Fullerton, Fernando C. Fuselli. Kelly Lynn Fines, Raymond Galley, William Gallagher. 
Theresa M. Gallagher, Catherine Gallagher, Margaret Regina Kelly Gallagher, Mary Elizabeth Gordioso, Harold Gormley, Rosalie Grillone. Ann Hagen, Kathleen Haney, Janet Harrington, James J. Hickey Sr., Patricia Hickey, Kathleen Howe, Roseanne Hunt, Paul F. Hurley, Jr., Mary E. Jaquette, William John Kane, Dennis Kelly, James E. Kenny III, Mary Koob, Gertrude Kroberger, Daniel Landrum, Elizabeth M. Lawless, Jessica Ann Alito, Mack, James J. McGuire, Jr., Philip Marciante, Jr., Dean S. Mariani, Daniel J. Marino, John J. McCormick, Jr., Elizabeth Ann McGuigan, Joseph F. Minahan, Robert J. Mink, Conchetta M. Mitchell, James F. Baldowney, Mary Malarkey, James Seamus Malarkey, Kevin R. Myers, Mary Catherine Norton, J. O'Callaghan, J. 
Don G. O'Connor, Jim Oliver, Skyler Justin Owen, Angela Panarello, Sharon Passarella, David Patterson, Patricia Ann Pillarella, Regina C. Peasy, Josephine Porowitz. Daniel J. Powell, Sr. Viola R. Quatrani. Marie Quinn. Ann M. Randall. John Patrick Rittinger. Joseph Romagnoli Rapisi, Joan Rangioni, Nicholas M. Rangioni, Jr., Marilyn Ronzoni, Thomas Rosser, Louis Rossi, John Rossi, John M. Rouse, Mary Carol Ryan. Giacomo Sabatini. Carol Ann Santangelo. Nicholas Sava. William J. Schwartz. Doris Schaefer, Rosemary Shea, Gary Sheehan, Patrick A. Shields, Joanna E. Silver, Nancy Sinclair, Joseph Frank Sita, James Smith, Jr. Michelle Ann Smith, Mar 
Marion Steckel. Arthur Steinhauer. Elmer Steinhauer. Elaine Stretch. Maureen Ann Sullivan. Mary Margaret Sullivan. Charles Taggart. Albert John Tate. Timothy J. Taylor. Susan Tomko. Monsignor Bernard J. Trinity. Anna Troyan. Joseph John Valenti. Adele Vecchione. Rita A. Vermillion. Dean J. Vucolo. Lewis Wagner. Lois Wagner, I'm sorry. Kathleen Marie Walker. Michael E. Walsh. Arthur J. Walsh, Sr. Joseph F. Weaver, Jr. Rosemary Winters. Jeffrey P. Winters. Jennifer Youngers. Roger Munoz. Clementine Picone. Jim and Hazel Lynham. William Spearing.
Let us pray. Eternal God, you see face to face those we remember here. May they know that we love them, that we miss them, and that they are not forgotten. Encouraged by the prospect of a day when there will be no more death or parting, and all will be well and all will be one, if it be your holy will, may we, whom we remember, be among the first to welcome us to heaven until that day, when in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, we share in the everlasting feast of Christ's family. Keep us in faith, fill us with hope, and deepen us through love to the glory of your name forever and ever. Amen. It's before the final blessing again. I thank all of you for coming out this evening. There is a great sense of peace and the solidarity that we share. A special word of thanks to Rich Grillone and our choir for leading us in this beautiful evening of reflection in this time of remembering our faithful departed. So. So often in the midst of the celebration of the funerals that we've celebrated in the last year, it is Rich and Michelle and our other cantors who have provided the beautiful music. And I have to say each time at the cemetery or after the funeral, they, uh, you all have expressed sincere gratitude for the beauty of the funerals that we have celebrated. So we thank you for all that you do, not just tonight, but through the course of the year. And a special word of deep, deep gratitude to Stephanie Duffy. All of you know Stephanie's name because she coordinates all of the details of the funerals for us. So I want to thank her because she really does put together so much of this evening's celebration. So thank you, Stephanie, for this evening. <laughs> the Lord be with you. May the God of all consolation bless you. For in his unfathomable goodness, he created the human race. And in the resurrection of his only begotten Son, he has given believers the hope of rising again. Amen. To all of us who are alive, may God grant pardon for our sins, and to all the dead a place of light, happiness, and peace. Amen. So we may all live happily ever after with Christ, whom we believe truly rose from the dead. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God.